It's the Los Piedras Railroad. We're visiting, as promised, with Daniel. He is the CEO, operator, builder, chief cook, bottle washer with the Fulton Road. And it is a developing channel on YouTube, just like mine. The neat thing about the Fulton Road is uh, I say that it's a, it has a little Boomer inspiration. Is that true from Boomer's River Road? Uh, thanks for having me on, Chuck. Uh, a little is an understatement. I, like probably many, many modelers, uh, am very inspired by Boomer's work. And he's an excellent teacher. And, you know, in my early videos, I mentioned over and over how he had um, helped me do stuff. And he still continues to do that today. How did you get the idea for the uh, for the Fulton Road? And can I just say, when I see it, I, th- uh, I love it. It's phenomenal. It's a shelf layout. I bet it has extension plans, right? Yes, it's a shelf layout. So this layout, the exact same space was previously occupied by an HO layout, which um, existed for about four years. I tore it down completely once and then rebuilt it. It was a layout in search of an identity. It had old tiny buildings and a mine, and I had some steam engines, but I had this desire to get into diesel engines. And um, the track plan was from Lance Mindheim when he first started the Los Angeles Junction layout. Love that layout. Which love, love so that many layout. people have, have copied. It's a great layout. So my track plan for the for what I called Eagle Mining Company was one of the variants that Lance did not end up using. Uh, it had two tracks into a mine, which was in the corner, and then uh, an additional uh, longer piece of track went into the short end of the L, which was kind of a uh, kind of a team track. There was a cattle pen there and a loading dock. It had steam trains, and it was a steam era layout. But I had a desire to run diesel locomotives, and, you know, they were completely out of place. So, yeah. And it wasn't modeled after anything. It was just a fictitious layout, uh, and I think that kind of uh, killed it for me. So I not only switched to the modern era, uh, but I also switched to N, which uh, gave me the opportunity to get a completely fresh start uh, with, with this layout. So where is the Fulton Road? When I see it, I think it's somewhere in the San Gabriel Valley. So I live in Laverne, right on the edge of San Dimas. Right. Right there. (laughs) Right there. (laughs) Yeah. Fulton Road is in Pomona, and it's this tiny little street that's inconspicuous, uh, but it's where the Pomona North Metrolink station is. Uh Uh-huh. And that is where... The big building on my layout, which is the WSI warehouse, is located. That's a, um, it's uh, an industrial park in North Pomona bordering uh, Laverne. So that's where it is. And for years, uh, because I used to commute downtown when I was working, I would take Metrolink sometimes and I would pass that station. I used to live further out and I would pass all these industries, especially the uh, propane uh, or the uh, liquefied natural gas distributor, which is called Aeropress. And I thought, what the hell is that? I'm going to have to find out one day. And then when I moved here, I thought, wow, all of these places are right here in the middle of suburbia. You know, my favorite scene on the layout is the front and center scene with the road that's got uh, overgrowth on it, and you've got a little cracking of the asphalt, and it looks like it's kind of a team track right there uh, (laughs) with the warehouse behind it and whatnot. And I have that one of that siding that's uh, up on Railwire when they were talking about Chicago crossings. And, you know, he's also, uh, that's Eric, that's a phenomenal layout. He's in Colorado. It is. I took a look at it. It's just amazing. We got some guys doing some good end scale stuff the group the end scale details group great group which is a, a great group uh i post on there occasionally and i i will post pictures of uh stuff i'm doing or have done on the layout yeah i love that page so, uh and i became a member of a whole bunch of other pages and i work okay. remotely and i still work and so um 
Sometimes uh, I have time in between projects. I go, let me go see what's going on. Or raising hell yeah. on the raising hell on the forums. <laughs> you know? So that's, I mean, that's why I got attracted to Boomer because it was, you know, one of the problems I see with some of the YouTube pages. And, you know, I, I'm at my infancy with this. I don't know the proper format yet. I'm trying. It's all hit or miss. But one of the things I don't like is just to see somebody sit there and talk. Oh, you mean like we're doing now? But at least with this presentation, <laughs> I'll have information information in the background but i'm talking about on the video just somebody like at a at a table you know talking there's no way i'm going to be runs trains or things or anybody like that and be able to do full productions because i i don't have the time and i don't have i don't really it's such a niche you know what we're doing it's not really gonna uh have capacity a capacity of views (laughs) yeah well it you know that that's an interesting point chuck because I'm kind of, well, I'm new and I'm not. I started uh, with the HO layout, filming it, and I made little videos for myself. And I learned on the old Windows Movie Maker, which uh, I don't think is available any longer. And I learned how to add music and, you know, do this and that. They were very much like the first videos of Fulton Road that I posted. But editing is just extremely time consuming it uh for guys like you and i there's not only the learning curve of how to do it within that whole process it just takes a ton of time so you and you and i are the pikers doing this i'm still trying to learn and you know half the time i'll post something and go oh my god that's the worst thing i've ever done in my life I just did it. I just tried to, I tried to hand paint graffiti because I figured, okay, let me see if I can do this. And I watched this guy. I think it's called It's Like That or something, this Canadian guy. And he does really good end scale and HO using micro pens. And I put yep. it up on Railwire. And I looked at the pictures and people responded to them. And I thought, oh, my Lord, I shouldn't have put those up. Stop. And the neat thing about rail wire is better modeling through peer pressure. Because what I learned from those guys, they'll just call you out. They don't care. Yes. Nobody's going to put a bunch of pictures up there and go, what a great job. You know, they'll go, uh, dude. Yep. Yep. Well, I think that's what many of us need is some honest criticism. So that, so, because that's how we learn, right? Right. No, absolutely. We, we learn from our mistakes. Absolutely. And hanging out with fellow modelers, which we really can't do anymore. It's really tough with time and whatnot. But the late Louis Blackowich, who was really the 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 uh, creator and uh, founder of the Lehigh and Keystone Valley Model Railroad Club in Bethlehem, PA. It's now a museum. He passed away a couple of years ago. When I, yeah. uh, when I worked in broadcasting in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania, I lived in Bethlehem, and it was down the street. And I learned everything I could from him on scenery. And it was insane, the stuff I learned. Um, you know, he was like my boomer. You know, I, right. I, I found people. Uh, D- David Frary was one. I found people that I could learn from that were doing it the way that I wanted to do it. You know, I said, okay, this isn't the Woodland Scenic shake and bake on glue on plywood anymore, you know? Right. Well, it sounds like you and I have followed very similar paths. I, uh, after I got that model railroader, I subscribed for a few years. I discovered Dave Frary. Right. I, I think Dave Frary has been a huge influence in the importance of scenery because that's one of the things that I really concentrate on. And as I've mentioned in some of my videos, there's a guy in um, Central California whose name is Rick Sutton. Rick Sutton is he, insane. He's insane. The Visalia Electric is... I, I, I put a post on Model Railroad Hobbyist and said if Boomer and Rick Sutton uh, uh, had a kid, it would be John Allen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Rick is a huge influence because uh, he models California and he, I think, very accurately depicts the agricultural areas of California, which I grew up down in the Coachella Valley, which is yeah. on the way to Yuma. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But, um, absolutely. Where at? Indio? Um, uh, thermal. Thermal. Love thermal. It's always 111 thermal. in thermal on Highway 111. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, yeah, my dad was a, a, a farmer, a rancher out there. Yeah, yeah. 
I grew up out there, but uh, I think Rick does a wonderful job. Rick really stresses color and having a cohesive color scheme for your layout. And, you know, it's taken a lot of trial and error for me, but uh, that's what I try to do on Fulton Road is have something that's more cohesive. I, I realize that, you know, this is a challenge for all of us. It's really difficult to truly emulate the prototype. And my layout is no different than any other. If you look at it, you'd say, well, that's not San Dimas. That's not Laverne. That's not uh, North Pomona. But uh, well, it's the it, it's the I when I looked at it right away, I said, this is somewhere between L.A. and San Bernardino. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad that that struck those notes with you because that's the intent. But in the end, I think what we're doing is it's our interpretation of a place and time. And I think color, which is uh, one of Rick Sutton's points, is is a huge part of that. If you can be cohesive, your layout is going to go uh, a lot further in being a convincing representation.